I've got this mysterious little cube in my possession and it can do so much stuff. Let's check it out. Coming up next, right here, I'm Better Biomed. Hello everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I'm gonna introduce you guys to the SimCube. Now, this is a fantastic little device produced by Prompt Technologies, and you guys probably already are aware that it exists, but I am here to share with you some of its extra features. And help me, I'm gonna use a generic GE monitor. We're gonna go over the NIBP. We're gonna go over the invasive blood pressure, some of the ECG features. It does quite a bit of stuff. For this little cube so what comes in the box you do have your cube first off you have a set of adapters like this now this has got a male and female side and you've got a quick disconnect that's going to connect right to the front of your device like so and then we have adapter cables so if you want to simulate invasive pressures you're going to need an adapter cable like this one here, for your type of OEM vendor, which this one's GE. And this one here is a male to female extension cable that's included with the backpack as well. So they go together. I've got it shortened up to keep the tabletop somewhat clean. This cable is going to plug into the IBP port right here on the front. And one of the things I want to show you guys is over here, you're gonna see a set of LED indicators and then in the middle here, you're going to see uh, IBP for zeroing out your pressures. We'll go over that. And you'll also see ECG respiration, arrhythmias, uh, pacer features, uh, HR sequence. It does so much stuff. And one of the favorite features of this entire device is the fact that it is a manometer. It is a manometer, guys. And I use it as a manometer for calibrating a whole bunch of stuff. Now, it doesn't go up as high as I'd like for doing things like the uh, pneumatic tourniquets. However, we'll go over that with another device that's included with the backpack later on, um, which goes way beyond that feature set, okay? It goes way up above pneumatic tourniquet levels. But this guy also acts as a manometer, and we will cover all that. So this guy doesn't have uh, an integrated power supply. I really wish it had an embedded uh, lithium battery because if it did, then all we'd have to do is plug it in and charge it and I wouldn't have an auxiliary power supply. Now, the good thing about this auxiliary power supply is that it just uses AA batteries, four of them, and you have a couple indicators here where it will show you the battery level and it'll show you AC on. Once you plug it in right here with an AC adapter, it will switch over to AC and when you disconnect the AC because you're gonna be in the field, it's gonna switch over to DC, running off the batteries. Now the problem with DC batteries is that they tend to leak, okay? So if you guys have this battery pack sitting in your uh, backpack or in your tool bag and you don't keep an eye on it, AA batteries have a tendency to leak and I say this all the time guys, don't ever, ever use cheap AA batteries in test equipment use name brand and some of the best name brand you can get okay so these are duracell they're what just duracell duralock so these are the ones that are supposedly guaranteed not to leak but anyway so it's got a battery on off switch and what we do is we plug it right here into the dc input port and then we go ahead and turn this bad boy on goes through a quick self check and it goes immediately into non-invasive blood pressure mode and we are ready to rock and roll. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up this monitor. In order to do checks on this device, you're going to need a cuff. You're also going to need the cuff bag. Okay, so this sleeve right here is to maintain a constant pressure on your cuff. This comes with the backpack. It's usually Velcroed right to the side, but you need it. Just rip it off, it pulls right out, and you are going to use your cuff by folding it like this, stuffing it inside. Here, I thought I turned it on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up. 
On my PDM off to the side, I already have my non-invasive blood pressure cable hooked up. I've got my uh, arterial blood pressure right here. I'm going to hook it up to P2. And this guy here is going to connect right to the front of this guy. For this one here, we will need this adapter. And I've already got my adapter sorted out. So you can see I've got this one right here, which is going to act as your female. So it's going to fit over your patient connector. And then your cuff is going to connect to the other side, like so. Okay. And then we're going to fold the cuff over. And it is going to go inside the sleeve. All right. So make sure that there's no kinks in the tubing. Make sure it's not binding. Just fit it in nicely. And here we go. Our machine is almost booted up. The other thing that this guy can do, very cool, is ECG, all right? And it has a full 10 leads of ECG on the side. But guys, guess what? If you have a different style of ECG connector than these ones right here, because these ones here can click on, they have been gracious enough to create an accessory. Check this guy out. This is a breakout. And a breakout is basically a device that takes a pin out of some sort and makes it into a more laid out fashion so that you can uh, access it much more easily. Let's see. So this guy here just connects like so. Uh, they're all labeled B4, B6, yada yada. All right, guys. Here I've got my breakout. You can see that it's exactly like the Sim Slim because it's the exact same case. You can fit banana plugs on the sides from each side, two different diameters. And we are going to go ahead and hook up our GE leads. I've got a adapter cable here, so let's go ahead and connect that guy right now. All right. And this is where the breakout comes in so handy. Now, I wish it wasn't a breakout with the button snaps. I wish it was just a large multi-pin cable like that one. Just plug it into the side and you'd have a breakout like this. That would be so nice. <sighs> Trying to use the button snaps on the side of this guy is not, not very friendly unless you're doing like a three lead. So let's go ahead and connect this guy right now. Left arm. We'll say that this style breakout is actually very nice. And B. There we go. Got a full five leads. All right. So what I'm going to do now is we are going to select the, the set, which is going to be adult 120 over. And one of the things we have to do if we want to simulate invasive pressures is we have to go ahead and zero our pressures. So we take it down to the zero mark. And over here, I'm going to go in. And click zero all pressures. All right, I've zeroed my pressures. Now I'm going to put in an adult 120 over 80, which should be an invasive pressure of 120 over. I'm going to go ahead and change my CBP to arterial two. All right, so we should be 120 over 80. And let's go ahead and check the non-invasive pressure. So let's go ahead and start that guy right now. So you can see what it's doing is it's inflating the cuff inside the bag and it's contained. So it's going to read an accurate pressure. If you don't have the cuff sitting inside a bag, it's not gonna read a certain volume and it's not gonna be a contained pressure. It's gonna put all the pressure on the Velcro of the cuff itself. And when you do that, you never get an accurate pressure. So that's why we tuck it into the sleeve. The other thing that you guys got to check on is make sure that your male and female connectors are pressed on nice and tightly and make sure there's no contaminants on there. Sometimes there is some stuff on there. Make sure also that your cuff has got both ears because if one of the ears is snapped off, which is so common with that design, um, it, it'll also give you problems. Okay. Let's see, what do we got? I've got a pressure of 119 over 79. 
It is currently set at 120 over 80. Bam, there you go. Non-invasive pressure is perfect. The arterial pressure, I've got it at 119 over 79. That is awesome. All right. So guys, this thing does so many different features. We can go into Neo. Let's go ahead and set it up for Arrhythmia. Here we go. So when we set it on Arrhythmia, the ECG is gonna go ahead and roll through a series of Arrhythmias. And if I remember correctly, it's gonna roll through every 30 seconds. So it's gonna be a whole bunch of different Arrhythmias. And if you wanna stop it on a certain Arrhythmia, if I remember right, you double tap on the yellow button, if I remember correctly. So here we are, we've got apnea, There you can see. And it's gonna roll through all the different uh, arrhythmias. There we go. So it's reading apnea on the respiration. It's getting the respiration uh, off of the ECG leads. I'm going to go ahead and silence that alarm. So this is how you test out to make sure that all of your uh, red alarms are going to hit. Just go ahead and set down arrhythmia, let it run through, and you just make sure that like here when it hit the PVCs, it's going to throw a yellow class alarm Obviously, apnea is going to be your red class alarm, which is the most severe. Every time a fresh uh, red class alarm hits, it's going to immediately throw an alarm. Here you can see, now I'm on a VTAC arrhythmia. Notice I'm not doing anything. The sim cube will automatically run through the various arrhythmias that are programmed into it. All I got to do is sit back and let it do its thing, just to make sure that my patient monitor is for sure going to go and print an alarm when these uh, different conditions happen. Now, now I'm on VFib. The only thing I really wish that this thing also had besides the battery and besides the ECG connected to the side with the breakout I really wish that this thing had a selectable arrhythmia either with a switch or with a second set of lights. I know it cycles through automatically and that makes it very clean. Uh, it's going to throw another alarm because I notice now I'm on a systole. But I, I wish that I could select my arrhythmias and just let it keep ringing out on certain arrhythmias. But uh, I understand for functionality and for user friendliness. It's just a single button press. All right, here we go. We're gonna take it off that guy. So there's other features on this guy like overpressure, manometer, leak test. The manometer is the one, like I told you guys, that I really like. I'm gonna go ahead and put NIBP start. And when I think that my NIBP system has got a leak, uh, one of the things that I like to do with many uh, NIBPs is watch the pressure on the screen as it goes up on my SIM cube. And like right now it says 130, I should see 130 over on my display. And I utilize the manometer quite often for troubleshooting. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on 120 over 80. I'm gonna do NIBP cancel, NIBP start. Let's go ahead and run one more. NIBP. This thing runs so flawlessly. I love it. And the fact that it's very, very portable. Just a couple minor tweaks, I think it would be the perfect piece of test equipment. And as it is, I have never seen one of these cubes break, ever. And techs carry these hundreds, if not thousands of techs carry this exact device every day and it is almost unbreakable. Now I, I know it's very daring to say that, but this thing, I have never seen it broken ever. And that is saying something. I mean, look at even the one piece that stands off, like the yellow button is protected by these cap head 
nuts. You see that, the acorn nuts? They're protecting them so that if I did drop it, it will not smash that button right there. How crazy is that? So let's go ahead and put it on high blood pressure. We're gonna go ahead and hit start. All right, so it already knows that both my non-invasive pressure and my arterial pressure are gonna shoot way high. It knows that, it's fine. It's gonna throw some alarms, which is exactly what we wanna test. So let's go ahead and set it on manometer because now I'm going to be testing out the pacer function over here on my ECG. And you can see it's coming up just fine. So anyway, guys, that, that is as much information as I can get you on this guy because it is such a self-explanatory piece of test equipment. And if only all our test equipment was this simple, they lay out everything right on the front of the display. There's a single button that accesses the features. It's easy to disconnect everything and stow away. I mean, if anything, that's the beauty of this device. I can pack it up and I can go on my way. All the accessories pack up nicely inside the backpack. You can see this guy here disconnects. Pull my blood pressure cuff out. It now goes back with the device at the end of the PM. Make sure that you take your invasive pressure line because this guy here is worth its weight in gold. Don't lose your cables. Keep all your cables together. That's the number one problem with biomeds is they lose pieces of their test equipment. When you leave a site, take all your stuff with you and make sure that you itemize it as you're putting it away. Guys, that is the SIM cube in a nutshell. I don't know if I could have made it any simpler than that. This is a beautiful piece of test equipment. There's just a couple minor tweaks that I wish I could do to it. But other than that, if it doesn't break and if it's easy to use, I can't complain. That's the SimCube, guys. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you like this. If you do, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel out and it helps YouTube figure out that people actually do like my content. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.